if you want to make 3D characters, you need to know how to sculpt clothes for your characters. And there are many ways of sculpting clothes inside of Blender, but I'll show you the easiest and most efficient way of doing it. So we're going to start off with the first step, which is going to be blocking out the clothes. So I'm going to add in a cube and in edit mode, I'll just scale this down and bring this somewhere around the groin. So now we want to block out the trousers. S and X, I'm going to scale this a little bit on the X axis. And S and Y, I'm going to scale it down and I'll move it forward just to fit the shape of the character. I'll also select that face and bring it forward. All right. So when we are making the block out of this cross, the topology doesn't matter. We can make it as rough as we want it to be. Ideally, we are going to retopologize this. So the topology doesn't matter in this case. I'm going to add in a loop cross right here. And now let's just extrude for the legs of the trouser. I'm going to select this and I'm going to extrude it downwards. I'll steal it and just make it match where the trouser should be, somewhere around here. And now so that everything we are doing here moves over to the other side, we can delete this and then we can add in a mirror modifier. Nice. And now we can add in a couple more geometry to help us define the shape of the clothes a little bit more. I'm going to add in four loop plus right here. And I'll probably add in two right here. You can also add in one right here and one right here. Okay. Let's delete these pieces because we don't need them. X and we're going to delete pieces. And X, we are going to delete these pieces. All right. This is a block out, but we still want the block out to follow the shape of the body. So the way we can do that is with the shrink wrap modifier. I'm going to add in a shrink wrap modifier. You can add it from over here. I have it added to my PC right here. I'm going to select the target object as the male and the trouser is going to snap to the body. That's exactly what we want. I'm going to increase the offset up just by a little bit. Okay. So that's what we want. And we can also add in a subdivision surface modifier. Once we have this, let's apply the shrink wrap modifier. Let's apply the subdivision surface modifier. Right, and we'll have some issues at the middle here just because of the email modifier. We can go into edit mode, select these vertices that are at the middle, S, X, and 0 to scale them on the X axis. Make sure clipping is turned on on the mirror, and then we can just move this back to make sure that they are not intersecting with each other. On these edges here, S, Z, and I'm going to scale it on the Z axis by 0. So something like this looks fine. So now we can use this as a base to further refine the shape of the clothes that we actually want. So I'm using this reference right here. So I'm just going to go into sculpt mode and using the grab brush, I'm just going to pull and push this into shape, something that looks similar to the reference. I'm not looking to get in the details at this stage, just the overall shapes of the clothes is what I want to have in place right now. So I'll just go ahead, make sure that the clothes is not intersecting. And to see this clothes a little bit better, we can come down here to object properties. Under viewport display, you can just change the color right here. If you don't see the color change in the viewport here, just come up to viewport shading. Another object color, make sure yours is set to attributes. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and block out the shapes according to my reference. So this looks nice for the block out of the trousers. Let's go in and block out the shades too. So the exact same way we did for the trousers, we're just going to use a basic cube. Going to edit mode, scale this down. And then we are going to use this to block out the clothes. We can add in a look cross right here. So we're going to extrude the sleeves from here. E to extrude and we can bring this somewhere around here. Make sure all of this is mirrored over to the other side. Let's add in a loop cut right here. We can select these faces, X and delete versus. And now we can add in a mirror modifier. To create the hole at the top of the shirt, we can select this face, R to insert and press B so that it sticks to the boundary. And once we have that, we can X and delete this face right here. And now we can select this one, bring it down. And now let's just add a couple more parts around here just to support the shape of the root a bit more. And now we add the same modifiers that we added in earlier on. We can add in the shrink wrap modifier. I'll select the targets as the character. 
ah i'm going to bring up the offsets just a bit more now some things are snapping to the piece of the crafter let's just go into edit mode and then we'll bring this down so that they snap to another part of the character i'll just select this and bring this down just like so nice and now we can add in also a subdivision of this modifier let's delete these faces that we don't need i'm going to edit mode select these faces x and delete faces and then i'll also select these faces and delete them nice now we can go back into objects mode we can apply the string grab modifier and also the subdivisions of this modifier let's fix up these edges at the middle s x and zero to scale them on the x axis by zero make sure clipping is turned on on the email modifier i'm just going to move this it to the middle i'm also going to select this and move them to the middle just like so i'll select this edges scale them on the z axis by zero just so that it's flat nice and i think we can add in a couple more edge loops here so that when we go to actually start sculpting this we have some more geometry to work with i'm just going to add in a couple more edge loops here all right now we can go into sculpting i'm going to go into the sculpting workspace and just before i start i'll also add in a viewport color to this mesh so that i can see it a little bit better with the grab brush i'll just go ahead and i'm using this reference so i'm just going to go ahead and block out these plates into shape now that we have the block out done we can move on to the next step which is going to be sculpting we can select this go into the modifiers i'm going to apply all modifiers if you still have any i'm also going to apply the new modifier on the trousers and now we can add in a multi-resolution modifier and i'm going to subdivide this twice and now with the multi -res, the multi -res gives us more geometry that we can actually sculpt on so if we go into edit mode now and we use something like the draw brush to start drawing in folds then actually start to draw in those folds at this stage you want to find a good reference that has folds and then just indicate the folds on the clutes so i'm just going to use the draw brush and i'm just going to simply draw out the clutes i definitely do not want to be using x symmetry where you're sculpting the clutes so just make sure to turn off x symmetry if it's turned on here this is not a plot fold tutorial, but the best tip I can give you is to use good reference to sculpt the folds of the clutes. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to sculpt out the folds on the clutes like so. now that we have something that looks like this we can move on to the third step which is going to be the detailing piece so at this stage we can up the subdivisions on the multi resolution modifier so i'm just going to subdivide it to around five okay and now we can do it with the crease polish brush you can adjust some of the settings on the crease polish brush i'll build the stroke and you can choose stabilize stroke and then you can also change the color to sharp. And then with this, you can go in and sport in seams on the clutes, just like so. You can also increase the strength of the crease polish brush. That if it does a bit too much, I'll just bring this down here. And I'm going to mark out those seams on the sides of the clutes. And to refine the shape of this seam, you can go over it with the pinch brush and then just pinch the seams together too to make it look nicer on the clothes. To add in pockets, you can also do the same thing. Just use the piece polish brush and mark out where the pocket would be, something like this. And then just go ahead and refine the shape of this. All right, so I'm done sculpting the details on the clothes. And if for any reason you go into object mode and you don't see any of the details, just make sure that under the materials modifier, the 
levels of viewport is set to the same number as it is in the sculpt so that you don't lose the details in the viewport display mode. Alright, so something like this. I'll now go ahead and complete the detailing of the sheds. So here's what we have after about 15 more minutes of sculpting. Definitely you should spend a lot more time than that working on your sculpt. But I'm going to call it done so that this rail doesn't get very long. One last thing we're going to do is to add some thickness to the clutes. If we take a look at the clutes, you can see that they are just single-sided objects. So the way we can do that is after to add a subdivide modifier and just adjust this to the thickness that you think you like. We have an issue. It's already the pipe crease is really hard edge on the clutes, but there's actually a way to fix that. Under the solidifier modifier, it comes down here to output vertex groups. You can create a new vertex group for the ring, and then you can smooth out that ring. Let's go into the data properties, and then let's create a new vertex group, and let's just call this ring. Go back to the modifiers. We can choose the ring vertex groups that we just selected. And now we can add in a smooth modifier. And now if we select the rim vertex group, we're going to see that we can start smoothing out the rim. We can increase the repeats to about three, something like this. And now if I right click and shade smooth, we have a much more rounded shape on the solid part. We can also do the same thing on the shell. You can add in a new vertex group and in this shell go back to the modifiers and you can add in that one and now let's also add in another smooth modifier we will restrict this to the shell vertex group and then we can increase the the bits to about four and if we take a look at this area here you can see how it's helping us smooth out that shape we're just going to adjust the solidify modifier i think it's to zero five just so that that's more of what you want and that's how you add thickness to the clutes now that you know that if you want to see how i actually use the techniques to make crafters you can check out this video right here and i'll catch you guys in the next one